Hi everyone, here we go again. Um, so this week we, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. We're starting week four, right? And we're talking about chapter three, okay? Chapter three is all about cells, okay? So up to this point, we talked about the scientific method, okay? Then we talked about atoms. Atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, are they alive? No, right? And then atoms bind with their electrons to form molecules. So molecules, water, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, are they alive? No, right? And then now we're going to cells. So if we're going from the smallest to the largest, it's atoms that are really, really tiny. They make molecules that are a little bigger. And then molecules are not alive, right? But this magical thing happens. These certain molecules get together and then they form cells. Now cells are alive, okay? Um, so the cells are alive, okay? So uh, what is it about that? Why are they called cells, right? You've heard that word before. You've heard that word in what context? When have you heard of the word cell? maybe jail cell, okay? The word cell, the first guy who ever saw cells under a microscope, uh, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, um, cell meant room, okay? So that's why he called it a cell. So this week um, in lab, we're going to be using the microscope, we're gonna be looking at cells, and you'll see cells look like rooms, okay? And that's where they got their name from. Now, what's amazing is cells are alive, okay? They do all of the things that living things do, okay? So if we think about it, what do living things do? They reproduce, they interact with their environment, they grow, they undergo metabolism, they use energy, right? They create wastes, um, so all the things that you consider alive, cells do, which is insane to think about, right? So on these microscopic levels, it could do these things. So this chapter is all about cells, okay? So some organisms are made out of single cells, so unicellular. Some organisms are made out of multiple cells, so multicellular. Um, so we're going to take a look at both. Like if we look at us, we're multicellular. We're made out of trillions of cells. So we're like a little city of cells, okay? Um, truly, the cells interact with one another. Cells can communicate with one another through chemicals, through hormones. Um, again, cells grow, cells die, cells replicate. They do all of these things. Okay, so cells. And if you look here, it says the smallest part of you. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what are the learning objectives. Describe what a cell is, the two general types. So there's two types. There's what are called prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So what are the differences? Structure of functions of cell membranes. So if, if you have this cell, right, this room, the membrane's really important because the cell interacts with its environment with a membrane, right? So cell membranes. Several ways in which molecules move across the membranes, right? Are they going in? Are they going out? Does everything go in? Does everything go out? Describe how cells connected and how they communicate, okay? So here, skin, right? Trillions of cells. How do they stay together, right? How do they work together, okay? So the connections. And then the nine important landmark in eukaryotic cells. Um, they're called organelles, tiny organ. So what are those organelles? You've heard of some of them, like mitochondria or nucleus or chloroplasts, okay? So again, this chapter is all about cells. And again, we're gonna have quite a bit of videos, okay? Because it's at least an hour lecture. It, again, normally it would be um, two hour and a half lectures, it would be three hour lecture. And since this is a, um, online, I go rather quickly. You could stop, you could pause, you could forward, you could do whatever you need to do. All right. So 
here's a picture of a cell. Um, this is a beautiful picture because in reality, you know, here's the cell membrane, here's the nucleus, here are all these things, yes? These are all the machinery, right? The cell's alive, it's interacting with its environment, it can make things, it can break down things, and so all the parts, okay? So all organisms are made out of cells. So if it's alive, okay, that's called the cell theory, which we're gonna get into. If it's alive, it's made out of cells, okay? So the plants outside, are they alive? Yes, they're made out of cells. Uh, a worm, earthworm, yes, made out of cells. Frogs, flies, uh, bacteria are made out of cells. Now there's this big thing about viruses because viruses are not made out of cells. So there's this argument, are viruses alive or are they not? Um, some biologists say yes, some bi biologists say no, because viruses cannot reproduce on their own. They need a host cell. Oh my gosh, like we're, they're talking about the coronavirus right now, right? And all the issues that we're having. Um, but they need a host cell in order to reproduce. Okay, so all organisms are made out of cells. So here we go. Cell, the definition, the smallest unit of life that can function independently, perform all the necessary functions. So here's a mushroom, right? Fungus made out of cells, animals made out of cells. Look at this head louse. You know, when you hear about people getting lice, that's what we're talking about. That's what they look like, ah, scary, okay. Cell theory. Now remember, the word theory doesn't mean I think, I guess. The word theory means it's been accepted over and over and over again, right? This hypothesis that has been accepted over and over again. Okay, so all living things are made out of one or more cells. All cells arrive from pre-existing cells. Huh, what does that mean? Where do cells come from? Big mystery, we don't know, okay? But what we do know is all cells come from pre-existing cells. So they don't just come out of thin air, but they come from pre-existing cells. Okay. So here's the cell theory. Here's a pretty slide, right? So all living organisms, whether it's animal, whether it's plant, whether it's fungi, protists, whatever, are made out of cells. And look, here, here they are, like these little rooms, okay? And again, this week, we're going to look at cells. And then where do new cells come from? They come from pre-existing cells. So again, take home message, right? You can pause on that and look at it. All right, so the different types of cells. Every cell on earth falls into one or two categories. There is what's called eukaryotic cell. There's what's called prokaryotic cell. So what does this mean? Pro means before, karyote, that's the kernel. So before the kernel. So these are the more primitive cells. These do not, there we go, do not have a nucleus. So pro, the kernel before the nucleus. These are the more ancient cells. So what we're talking about are bacteria, okay? Bacteria are prokaryotic, okay? Eukaryotic, true kernel, okay, that's what it means. They do have a nucleus, okay? And the nucleus contains DNA. So our cells, okay, the cells we're gonna look at, in lab, we're gonna look at prokaryotic and we're gonna look at eukaryotic. So bacteria are prokaryotic, plants and animals are eukaryotic, and we're gonna look at both in the lab. Okay, so here's an example of a prokaryotic cell. This is a bacterium. Um, they have a cell membrane. They actually have a cell wall, just like plant cells do. They do have DNA, okay? DNA is a genetic material, right? They have it, but the DNA is not enclosed in a nucleus, okay? And these types of cells are super, super duper tiny, okay? So we're gonna look at them and compare them to eukaryotic cells are really small. So small, ancient bacteria. That's what you should think of when you think of prokaryotic cells. All right, take home message. Okay, so we can have single-celled organisms of prokaryotic. Now eukaryotic, you true kernel, okay? So plants, plants are made to have eukaryotic cells, animals, fungi, okay? So pre pretty much the things you could see with your eyes, they have, um, for the most part, of course you could see tons of bacteria, so I shouldn't say that. But the things that are larger, right? You can think of uh, eukaryotes or eukaryotic cells. 
So what is it about them? Okay, um, the biggie is there's a nucleus and the nucleus has DNA. So this is a really nice picture comparing prokaryotic cells to eukaryotic cells, okay? Um, so here, eukaryote, true kernel, the DNA is inside. Now, now basically, you guys, the rest of the lecture is all about prokaryotic cells, okay? Not, uh, excuse me, no, not prokaryotic. The rest of the lecture is all about eukaryotic cells. Not that prokaryotic is unimportant. Of course it's important. Um, you could take a whole class. You could take a whole semester class in microbiology. Micro, what does micro mean? Small, right? tiny microbiology is all about the little guys the prokaryotes and just as much diversity as we have in our world here you know that you could see like plants and animals there is that much diversity with prokaryotes okay so if we were taking microbiology it would be about them okay but this is a general biology class right and we're going to focus on the eukaryotes okay so eukaryotic cells plant cells are eukaryotic animal cells are eukaryotic now people this is a pretty important picture okay and we're going to look at it again in lab why is it important because it shows you the features of a plant cell right plant cell it shows you the features of an animal cell this is wild okay i want you to stop and think about it okay one of the major themes of biology was the unity and diversity of life right right okay that was from chapter one okay plants when we look at plants do they look like us you're like no miss Collins. they don't look like us right but look, when we look under the microscope and when we look at their cells, look, plant cells have a nucleus with DNA. Animal cells have a nucleus with DNA. Plant cells have mitochondria. Mitochondria, that's like the, um, the energy um, uh, storage power plant for the cell, right? So plant cells have mitochondria. Animal cells have mitochondria. Plant cells have the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, animal cells have that. Gold, gold, smooth endoplasmic, smooth endoplasmic. Golgi apparatus, Golgi apparatus. So it's really wild when you think about it. Plants look nothing like us, yet their cells look very much like ours. And not just that, the, the machinery does the same thing, okay? Now, plants have some extra stuff, the chloroplast, okay, structures not found in animal cells. So plant cells have three structures that are not found in animal cells. They have chloroplasts, okay? Chloroplasts have to do with photosynthesis, so grabbing the sun's energy and converting it into sugars. Plant cells have large vacuoles, okay? Sometimes animal cells have that. That's what they store the sugar. So if plants are going to take sun's energy and make sugar, they're going to store the sugar in here. My pointer is gone, okay? And then plant cells have what's called a cell wall, like the prokaryotes have the cell wall, plant cells have the cell wall. Um, that's made out of the cellulose, if you remember that from chapter two. Animal cells do not have that. Okay, so the rest of the chapter is going to be focusing on cells, right? And the first part is going to be the membrane and the complexities of the membrane, then the organelles, right? Organelle, tiny organ. All right, so where do the organelles come from? There's what's called the endosymbiotic theory or endosymbiosis. You know, where where did these things come from? And what's a mystery? Like mitochondria have their own DNA. That's the genetic material again. So like, how did that happen? What they think are the ancient cells, like eight other cells. By the way, we have videos that you can see how cells eat other cells. So it's kind of really neat. I'll put that up. I'll make sure to put that up. Um. So yeah, so that's what in, in the endosymbiotic theory is about. Okay, so here, for example, ancestor to eukaryotic cells, 
might have eaten other cells and then they live together. So that's endosymbiosis, right? Or symbiosis, excuse me, endo means inside, right? So we can look at that. All right, now we're gonna talk about the parts of the cell and we're gonna stop this uh, video and then go to video two.